The United States Department of Energy and the NNSA enhance national security by preventing nuclear weapon proliferation and by responding to radiological emergencies around the world. A significant part of this mission is the ability to efficiently detect and characterize hazardous materials. Savannah River National Laboratory is a unique, multi-program DOE research and development center. The lab's National Security Directorate specializes in radiological detection, characterization, and forensic science. SRNL experts have assembled a world-class advanced optical spectroscopy laboratory, known as the Laser Lab, to support its radiological detection and characterization programs. As nuclear materials decay, they emit alpha, beta, and gamma radiation, which can induce damage to materials. This induced radiolytic damage to the crystal lattice can be measured with spectroscopic techniques, such as vibrational spectroscopy. Vibrational spectroscopy can be accomplished with Raman spectroscopy and also with infrared spectroscopy. Each technique uh, provides different kind of vibrational information. For instance, there are certain modes of vibration in a molecule that can only be observed with infrared spectroscopy, such as water bands. That can be easily observed in the IR. Meanwhile, in the case of Raman spectroscopy, what really provides information is the polarizability of the electrons that surround the molecule. So if the molecule has a lot of electrons, well, that vibration will be observed in the Raman spectrum. So they give you different kind of information which is used to characterize a given material. The characterization information is critical to reducing the threat of radiological terrorism around the world. SRNL's laser lab is a clean lab, which means only small amounts of radioactive material are allowed inside. Small quantities are fixed in a double-walled container for safety control and a window in the protective casing allows laser light to pass through. I don't need too much sample. All I need is just a 10 micron spot. That 10 micron spot provides an incredible amount of information. If the thickness of a human hair is approximately 50 micron, then these samples are approximately 20% of the size of a single human hair follicle. While they may be small, these samples have a big story to tell. SRNL has demonstrated the ability to use Raman spectroscopy to determine chemical speciation and aging information, which can help solve tougher questions relating to national security issues. When radiological materials are discovered in an unexpected location, this starts the clock to answer a series of investigative questions. What is the material? Where did it come from? How long ago was the jurisdictional control lost? Experts must extract the most information possible as quickly as possible in order to secure the material and prevent further proliferation. Using a spectroscopic method, we are in a certain way measuring the crystallinity of the material. And based on the crystallinity of the material, we can tell you how old that plutonium dioxide has been since it was last calcined. Basically, understanding the calcination date, it provides a clock. You can have a clock based on when the material was made in the reactor. You can have a clock based on when the last purification of the material has been made, where many of the daughters has been removed and now you have a pure material. Then you can use that information to extrapolate back in time from when this material has been synthesize, produce, ship, calcine, and so on. Each one gives you a different kind of unique information. It's like a puzzle. SRNL's laser lab began with two lasers in 1990. Today, more than 35 lasers, ranging from continuous wave to femtosecond pulse lasers, are housed in one of DOE's largest spectroscopy labs. Other forensic tools include microscopes, high-speed imaging cameras, and instrumentation to extract data from infrared to ultraviolet spectral regions. 
One of the advantages that we have is that we have it all consolidated within three adjacent labs. So we can get a sample and we can get one laser beam from this place to another laser beam to the other location and uh, send it and then do different kind of analysis. SRNL National Security Directorate was able to build this unique research space by leveraging Laboratory Directed Research and Development, or LDRD, program funds. Through different proposals through the years that have been funded, we have been able to integrate many lasers and equipment that we couldn't do before. And that kind of effort in helping our customers through the LDRD program has helped us at the same time to get additional funding from different government agencies. The LDRD program at SRNL is a key driver for incubating novel concepts and exploring new scientific areas. Through its success, the SRNL Laser Lab has added new positions and expanded research focus areas. This year, the lab is taking basic research one step further as principal investigators explore quantum entanglement. The quantum entanglement theory states that entangled photons can sense each other instantaneously, even when miles apart. One entangled photon always knows what the other entangled photon is doing. Einstein called this controversial theory, spooky action at a distance. If successfully applied, quantum entanglement research could revolutionize nuclear materials analysis by enabling measurement from greater standoff distances. This would be particularly useful in collecting quantitative data from limited access areas, such as high radiation zones or high temperature furnaces. Each year, LDRD project results are published in an annual report. For more information on SRNL Advanced Spectroscopy Capabilities or National Security Mission Support, visit the SRNL website. SRNL, we put science to work to protect the nation.